so Romans 10 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Just like fear, fear of disease, fear of dying young comes by hearing and hearing the word of the devil. The devil is doing everything to deflate your faith. He is bringing in news. He's bringing in distractions so that they can, because once your faith is gone, then you are vulnerable to the devil. I will say by the stripes of just as you are healed. I will say himself, Jesus himself took your infirmities and bore your sicknesses. What Jesus Christ bore, you need not bear. I pronounce you healed in the mighty. Now powerful name, the name, the name, the name, the name of Jesus Christ. Be made whole. Have you heard of Loki Christian Bookstores? It's a mega Christian resource center in Abuja, which specializes in wholesale and retailing of Bibles and Christian books motivationals, self-development, business and management books, music, gifts, novels, children books, and lots more. You can also pick up your audio and video tapes, CDs, DVDs, and VCDs. Visit us at our head office, suit A12 and 13, Ground Floor, Rochas Plaza by Tantalizers, Wu Zone 3, Telephone 080-513-56223. 080-366-0787 Faith is an act. We go to act of faith. Mark 16, 15. To, uh, and, he said, and, and he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to Every creature. This is the instruction that has been given to us by the commander in chief. Our commander in chief, the king of kings and lord of lords, has given us instructions. And that's why we are here tonight. Going to, going to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. As long as presence is a human being. Okay? Number 16, verse 16. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who believes does who, he who does not believe will be condemned. That's the name of Jesus. We will, we will do the first sign is that we're going to cast out demons. He's talking about authority over, over Satan and his courts. That's the number one. The rest are the, are the works of Satan. But number one is that we've got authority over Satan and his courts, demons. My, in my name, they will cast out demons. Secondly, they will say, they will speak with new tongues. Number two, we also expect people to be filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. Praise God. Verse 18, number three. They will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. That means there is no weapon of the enemy formed against which shall ever prosper. As you do the work of the, of the ministry, no weapon. There is nothing anybody can do to you that can bring you down anywhere. Okay? Now look at it. And then the last one. Said they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Is this say they may or may not recover? No, 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 no. There is a certain thing involved. There is a they will. They will recover. So we are expecting that as you obey this and lay hands, your only job is to lay hands. It's God's job to make them recover. Okay? You don't do God's job for him. Do your own. Let him do his own job. Okay? Those who need healing, we we'll lay hands on them. If they, it is first of all, if they are willing, you need to be willing. If they are willing, we we'll lay hands on them and they will recover. Okay? And then, book of verse 19. So then, after the Lord has spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And verse 20. They went out and preached everywhere. Went out and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them. Confirming the word through the accompanying signs. It is God who confirms the word. The word is already anointed. But as we obey him, we expect him to confirm the word. He's his own that we don't have to bother about him, he will do it. It's only we now that we bother about ourselves. Whether we are willing to go ahead and do what we need to do. Praise God. So here we're going to look at a, a, a typical example here in the Bible of uh, Jesus Christ is a typical example here. He obeyed the word. He did what his father, what his father asked him to do. Just like we are obeying him here, uh, he obeyed the father. 
and wherever he went, he set captives free. He healed the sick. Praise God. Look at let's look at uh, Mark chapter two, Mark two one to twelve. That's from verse two. He made many, he made many gather to, to, together, so that there was no longer room to receive them. Not even near the door, and he preached the war. He preached the war. He preached the war. He didn't preach tradition. He didn't preach doctrines of devils. He preached the word. We as a ministry, our job is to preach the word. Praise God. Then they came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, the, the, through, through they let down the, the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, see, see verse 5 here, underline the word, saw their faith. What is important is your faith. It is your, if you see Jesus healing, the Bible will say, your faith has made you. Your faith has made you. Go your faith, according to your, according to your, according to your faith. According to your faith, according to your faith. He saw their faith. He saw, he, he saw their faith. He said to the public, son, your sins are forgiven. Sins are forgiven. I will talk, talk about that shortly. Why it's important to have the take care of sin. Okay? And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they, they reason thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the party, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. He, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. You see, this man's sickness, there is sin involved. There is a sin angle to his sickness. Okay? Sickness and sin are twins. Okay? They are very close. There are times when the enemy may attack you because of sin. There are times when you, do, you will not do anything wrong and the enemy may attack, you, attack your body. And many people are struggling with sickness and disease in their body because of condemnation for the sins they have committed. Okay? They are suffering from lingering pain and distressing symptoms in their body because they, 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 remain, they, they, they remain in the realm of condemnation. Okay? Look at it now. But see, Jesus took away there. I said, I, I said, you are right, take up your bed and, and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all. So that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. Okay? Then he went to the he went he went out again by the by the sea, and all the mortal came to him and he taught them. Teaching, teaching, teaching. Go to go to go to look. Look chapter five. Five fifteen. There's something about the healing power of God that the, you see, the gospel is easily confirmed with healing. When you begin to lay hands on the sick in your different groups, when you go out to pray the gospel and you are laying hands on the sick and expecting recovery, is an advertiser of the gospel. You know, it helps. If, if people know that it's not just, you're not just pretty, preaching mere words now. A word is, just like you read just right now, he confirms the word with signs, accompanying signs. However, the report went around concerning him, that's Jesus. All the more, there will be report about us. Because we represent Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, and great multitudes came together. Great multitudes are coming into this ministry. And great multitudes uh, came together to hear and to hear and to be healed. There is a connection between hearing and healing. Because faith, Romans 10, 17, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Just like fear, fear of disease, fear of, of dying young comes by hearing and hearing the word of the devil. If you are facing symptoms in your body, lingering symptoms that seem to be stubborn in your body, and you go to where they talk about people who are dying of similar disease, they die of a liver problem, they die of a kidney problem, they die of an intestinal problem. They are if you listen to it, you build fear in you. But if you change channel, leave fear channel, and go to faith channel, take your remote control, change to faith channel, the world, to hear and be here. There's a connection between hearing and getting here. Because hearing build faith. Look at it. Okay, let's go to 17 now. 
Now it happened on the certain day as he was teaching there that, that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal. Look at it now. Then behold, men brought on a man brought on a on a on a bed on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find out they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the house top and let them down with his bed through the tiling into the into the into, into the mist before Jesus. When he when he see verse twenty, when he saw their faith. He saw the faith of the man that was on the bed and the man that the three four men that carried him. And you know, you know, it takes faith. Listen, it takes faith. It takes faith in God for somebody who is dying, who is paralyzed, to alive to, to carry him to climb roof. Most people say, I beg. No carry me into that roof. If you carry, what if I go for if I follow? If, what if I go for? I beg, uh, let's wait. If he passed this side, the man had faith to be healed. The four men who cried him had faith for him to be healed. See, what you're looking for is your faith. The devil is doing everything to deflate your faith. He is bringing in news. He's bringing in distractions so that they can, because once your faith is gone, once you have, the faith is gone, then you are vulnerable to the devil. He is putting pressure on, your, on you. Symptoms, feelings uh, of pain and discomfort. Yeah. Decisive symptoms. He is putting pressure on your body to cause you to fear. He is putting pressure on the body where, the, where you can see, what you can feel, what you can hear, what you can see. He is bringing those pressure on you. Because as long as those pressure is exerted on you, then you begin to, you begin to lose sight because the word of God is superior. The word of God is, in, is in superior. The word of God is eternal. What you are feeling in your body is temporal. What the, the symptoms can change in a moment. The sinner can change overnight. The sinner can gradually disappear, dissipate and disappear. But see, listen now, he is temporal, but the word of God is stronger than symptoms. The word of God is, 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 is stronger. See, he's not just we're not talking about just letters now. We are talking the word of God is spirit and life. Look at it now. That man has faith. Verse 20. When he saw their faith, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven. Why didn't he just heal, say you are here right away? He had to deal with the source of the problem. He, condemnation and because see, people have done crazy things in the past. They have committed sins in the past. Maybe they just did something crazy. And then the enemy come, comes against them. And then you have already asked God for forgiveness. He's forgiving you. Now you have to deal with condemnation. The enemy brings condemnation there to make you feel guilty, guilty conscience. He begins to make you feel guilty. And as long as you are feeling guilty, you lose confidence to get healed. The moment the enemy is putting pressure on you and you are feeling guilty, and you are you, because of what you have done, you are condemning yourself. The moment you start condemning yourself because of things you have done, you don't believe that God has, has forgiven you. You don't have faith that God has forgiven you. Then there is no way you can get healed. There are more people who are lying on the sea right now. There are born again believers who are lying on the sea right now because they, the enemy is condemning them for the sins they have committed. And you see, so you see, you're a child of God. You're not a sinner, you're a sin. And you messed up. You messed up. You don't stay in that sin and be condemning yourself. Once you repent, and you repent, you will get boldness and confidence to demand your healing. From the devil. See what see Jesus did, he, he dealt with it here. He dealt with the sin angle here. Okay, the first thing he did was sin angle. He said, Man, your sins, plural, sins are forgiven you. Some is only one sin, some they are different sin. I did this thing before. Maybe got, that's why I'm having this problem. I just, I didn't, no, I the enemy is giving you reasons why that sickness is must be your body, is a liar. If you for, if you've confessed your sins, they are forgiven. Praise God. Look at verse 31. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to, began to reason saying, who is this who speaks blasphemy? 
Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise up and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power not to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I said to you, Come the bush, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Authority. Authority now speaking. You see, you are, anywhere you go to, you are speaking with authority. You are speaking of disease. You are speaking of the devil. You are commanding both, both bodies to be healed. High blood pressure, be gone. I command my body healed. Body be healed, be made whole. Cancer die, cease to be. Look at it now. Immediately he rose up before them and them took up what he had been, he had been lying on and departed to his house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear. See, we have seen same things today. The same people who are criticizing Jesus. They are saying they have seen same things today. Listen, church. The word is the healer. The word is the healer today. But we say he sent his word in the Old Testament and healed them. And deliver them from their destructions. The word is the healer today. The word of God is medicine to our body. I don't care what the disease is. See, there are some signal disease that people fear. See, as far as the word of God is concerned, the word of God is no respect of disease. The word, the word of God is no respect of any ailment. Terminal disease, temporary disease. I don't care what the signal and disease is. The word of God is no respecter of disease. The word of God is spirit and life. The Bible says the word of God is sharper than entry of Jesus. You see, look at me again. Give me a second, two, two. The word of God is sharper than entry of Jesus. That's, that's the Hebrews. But look at this again now. See, I want to see an example in this again here. here. Eh? Look at what, look at what, what this again said here. Then the spirit entered me. When he spoke to me, when he spoke, the spirit entered. Look at it now. And set me on my feet, and I heard him who spoke to me. See, imagine a paralytic, a, a paralyzed man. A man paralyzed. I don't know how many years in paralyzed. Uh, and Jesus spoke. Take up your bed. Stand up. Go to your house. See, the word, the word of God is the healer today. The word of God is the healer today. Jesus Christ is the word. Jesus Christ is the living word. He is the living word. And when you want to understand the living word, you will go to the written word. The written word explains the living word. So when you are facing sickness in your body, when you're, you're, you, need to, you need to sharpen your mouth and get the word, load your mouth with the word. In the face of Apparent symptoms in the middle of distressing pain, you are speaking the word. See, in the face of the devil with failure dancing naked before you, you are standing before those symptoms and disease, and say, You are declaring that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. Mr. Devil, hear me and hear me well now. I'm speaking to my body. Body, I pronounce you well. Kidney function well. Liver, be made whole. Blood pressure, be normal. See, as you speak the word in faith, you are, see, you are, you, are, you, are, you are relying not on any other thing except the word. The word is strong enough to stand on its own. In other words, I don't care what the problem is. It is sharper than any two edges sword. It has the capability of piercing or the divine asunder of the soul and of the spirit and of the joints of the bones and the marrow. If it's any part of the body, the word penetrates. See, you, as you speak the word, as you make pronouncement, as you speak the word in faith, you, as, you may not feel anything when you are speaking it. 
Because fear is contraband. You must not be caught with fear. See, that's why if you are dealing with fear, listen now. If you feel God, fear and sickness are twins. The enemy is bringing fear of death. Fear of, fear of premature death. He brings fear, 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 fear. What to do is that before you start speaking the word of God, stake authority over fear. Say fear in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I resist you. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear disease. I refuse to fear sickness. I refuse to fear death. I'm standing on the authority of the word of God. I refuse to fear. I shall not die but leave. See, once you take order over fear, now you go to the wall, begin to speak the wall because that's the area now. And after you do that, when you do that one, what, what, now what's the next thing? The next thing is to begin to worship God because you are healed. You are worshiping God not because you feel healed. Not because you are feeling better. No, no, no. You believe that you have spoken the wall. The wall is already doing the job. So you begin to thank God because, you know, faith, faith, you see, faith is not something you can, you can touch. Faith is invisible. But as, as you keep speaking faith, the, the evidence of that faith becomes visible. He goes to the area people cannot see, nobody can see, and begin to deal with the sickness from the room. See, he says, faith is spiritual. Faith is spiritual. Your sickness disease is physical. And the spiritual is stronger and more powerful than the physical. Because God is a spirit. For anyone who will watch this message on, tele, on telecast, in the mighty and the, if you are sick in your body, touch where you are sick. And let's agree. If you are watching us on, t- on, on t- to this, t- 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 this message, in the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus Christ, I command to be healed. I, dis- I command sickness, disease. You lose this body now. Let him go. Let him go. Let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will say by the stripes of Jesus Christ you are healed. I will say himself, Jesus himself took your infirmities and bore your sicknesses. What Jesus Christ bore, you need not bear. I pronounce you healed in the mighty. Now powerful name, the name, the name, the name, the name of Jesus Christ. Be made whole. In Jesus name. Thank you Father. We we'll give you praise. Oh let me go to worship God now. Thank God for healing us. Thank you for healing our bodies. Thank you for making us all. We bless you in the name of the Lord. All in Rosu Soko Tulaba. Eribunda Baba. You have sent the word to heal us. You kept us in perfect health. Oh, bring God of Bosi. Even sick disease that we have not even discovered that was going in our body, we declare it dead. They are dead. So tell your, tell your, tell your, tell your neighbor, congratulations. You are strong in the Lord. And the power of His might. Amen. That's it. Go and prosper. That's all. That's all. That's all we can take on this program today. Praise God. If you are not born again, you need to get born again. And my darling husband will be praying for you to get born Praise again. Praise God. Hear me? There is a heaven to gain and a hell to show. Mm. Getting born again is not doing things. Not doing things. Mm. It's not uh, penance. Mm-mm. It's not uh, traveling the Holy Land. Mm. It's not giving up to the poor. Mm. It's not the goody goodies mm. that people do. Mm. Getting born again is simp- simply putting your faith in the finished work of Jesus mm. and opening your mouth and confessing Him as your Lord. Mm. So, here, if you are not yet born again, you can get born again right now. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is giving you a golden opportunity to get, to get saved. Mm. Praise God. Say this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth. And I confess with my mouth. Jesus. 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 You are the Son of God. You are the Son of God. That died for my sins. That died for my sins. You are raised. You were raised. From the dead. From the dead. For my justification. For my justification. Jesus. Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Right now. Right now. I'm yours. I am yours. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, if you say that simple prayer. You are born again. Amen. You have crossed from death to life forever. Amen. Praise God for that. I, I got born again one day. My wife got born again one day. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And now two of us are candidates of heaven. Amen. There is no likelihood that we ever go to hell. Because, why is it because of our good work? No, because we are born again Amen. by the blood. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So right now you are born again. The Bible says you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. All things have passed away. You still look like old creature outside. But inside you are a new creature. Amen. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Inside you, you are a new creature. Amen. So open your mouth and, be, and say, I am a new creature. I am a new creature. All things are passed away. All things are passed I'm away. I'm brand new. I am brand new. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So that's who you are right now. You are brand new. So go tell, tell your neighbor, tell your friends, I'm born again, I'm born again, I'm born again. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you are sick in your body, God wants you well. Amen. Even if you are not yet saved, Amen. God wants to extend this, this healing message to you. Amen. Touch where you are sick in your body and let's, let's let my wife here command the sickness. Using the power in the name of Jesus Christ to get us out of your body. Sickness and disease. Yes, sir. Go. That's right. In Jesus' name. Amen. And it's done. It's done. As simple as that. See, I believe I receive. I believe I receive. I take my healing. I take my healing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' now, name. Now, if you believe you receive, then let's, let's, see it, let's see it action. Stand up if you are lying down. If you are not eating, go cough for apple. Or if it is a, a, a goosey you want to eat, eat something right now. Stand up and act on your faith right now. That shows you truly believe. Praise God. The next very important, very, very vital thing is that you need to prayerfully look for a living church. Amen. You hear I talk about living church, living church, yeah, because hear me, there is no way you can give birth to a child, or if the child is not known, that child will die prematurely. Mm. So you need a vibrant church. There are good churches, there are bad ones. You need the help of the Holy Ghost. To locate a good one. That's my right. Mm. So my prayer is that God will help you, the Holy Spirit will help you to get the right ministry, Amen. where you can grow and become strong as a Christian. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Say, my steps are ordered by the Lord. My steps are ordered by the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus so name. we agree with you that your steps are ordered by the Lord to the right ministry. No matter how far away it is from your house. We're going to come to church. I don't want to go near your house. Mm. Go show you a church that may not, be, may not be near your house, but it's the right place where you can grow. In Jesus' name. In the Pastor and Mrs. Lotus at the Hebrew Christian Center for Sunday worship service by 9 a.m. Tuesdays, Bible studies and leadership training by 6 p.m. Fridays, prayer and healing service also by 6 p.m. Then we sit A14 Ground Floor, Rochester Plaza by Loki Christian Bookshop with Season 3, Abuja. For further details, call 0803-965883 or email Eagle Christian Center at yahoo.com. Make it a date with the Lord and experience God's transformation power in your life. You will never be the same again. you've done for me your blood has set me free